Uh, welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. And would you like to introduce yourself for people who can't remember? Uh, yeah, Graham, I do the filming and the editing. There you go. Whole of Dark Corners is here. <laughs> uh, we haven't done one of these sort of like uh, catch up videos for a while, so we're going to try and get back into the habit to some extent. Uh, and yeah, it's been a difficultish year to be doing uh, stuff like this. It has occurred to me all through this, and this is literally just occurring to me now. <laughs> is it in bad taste at all, us introducing, say, welcome back to our dark corner of this sick world? Ah, we, we preempted very, the whole thing. It's been a very unwell world. Well, no, I think it's nice because we're welcoming people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making it, making it a little brighter, hopefully. No, uh, so yes, it's been it's been a while since we've done one of these. Yes. Um, it's been a very up and down year for 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 us for everybody. Um, yeah. UK locked down pretty hard just before Christmas, and we've only now just sort of seen that easing, which has allowed us to meet up and shoot episodes in person again. Which is a huge relief because because uh, I hate these camera phone footage that we've been getting. <laughs> and I hate doing it. <laughs> Everyone's happy. Yeah, I think it has been. I think there was a, when we started doing um, home shot ones in the first lockdown around this time last year, there was a certain novelty value uh, to people in seeing my home. That wore off really quick. <laughs> on the other hand, out of, the, I mean, not on the other hand, but out of, out of the lockdown and out of the closure of cinemas, we started doing um, streaming reviews, yes. which we wouldn't have otherwise done. Uh, and that's you know they've they they've some they have a small but loyal following, I think. <laughs> like the like the channel as a whole. They have, they a, have a smaller slightly, but loyal slightly following. Smaller. When I came into the uh, into the lockdown, I really didn't watch that many films online except stuff that we were streaming specifically mm -hmm. for Dark Corners. I didn't really watch stuff on Amazon or Netflix. Um, uh, and since lockdown. I've, I've joined Netflix, I've joined BFI Player, I've started watching films more So are you no longer generally. piggybacking off my Netflix? No. Oh. No, I, I, I have my own Netflix account. People make these big sweeping statements, but certainly the lockdown pandemic, it has changed my viewing habits. Yeah. I don't know if it has yours. Well, I've not gone to the cinema. Well, that's... Uh... <laughs> In that sense. You were always more tech savvy than me. It, it, yeah, it, so it takes a seismic shift for me to do something <laughs> like watching a film online and that's now something I would do habitually so it has changed and I'll, I'll be interested to see how much I keep doing that after, after I can go but I'm sure I'm re I'm very sure I will start going back to cinemas once once they're open and once I'm convinced that it's safe and everything but um but I think this is probably a habit I've picked up yeah and to be honest I mean to be honest if I stopped then that would kind of be a waste of money on on, on player and Netflix and Amazon we've had a lot of really interesting films that have seen much wider appeal because they've been put on streaming as opposed to they might have appeared in some indie cinema somewhere and then vanished yes. out of sight. So a film like Vast of Night, for example, I don't know would have the reviews that it got had it not been released in a pandemic when there was nothing else to watch. Yeah. I mean, it's getting it's not quite getting the same publicity as a lot of the big releases mm. which are going out on Netflix and stuff. But it's on an equal footing there on the platform. It is there yeah. if you find if you if you find it. Yeah. So um, I guess the difference is in cinemas, then cinemas can be block booked completely mm. by a single film. Yeah. Uh, on Netflix or on other other platforms are available. Um, <laughs> then every, everything is there. There's nothing. Nothing's being given priority. They're obviously pushing some more because yeah. they've got their money to make. But um, it's not like you can miss these things. They're there for you at any point. Yes. You've got and to really work to see independent films in cinemas in yeah. normal times. Especially if you don't live in a big city, then oh, yeah, you, you just forget about it. Chance in hell. Uh, I, I would say I'm not seeing, on the streaming platforms that we've got, I'm not seeing enough foreign films on there. And maybe that's just the algorithm's not working in my way. But it feels like there's a lot of foreign films that we could be getting that we're not. Yeah, that's maybe true. We found some interesting ones. I mean, we were yeah. talking, um, Erementari, I think, is, the, is the, the standout of the ones we've done for Dark Corner streaming. Yeah. That's one that people really seem to take to. I had no idea about it when we watched it, and it just proved to be really our sort of thing, mm. and the sort of thing of our audience as well. And that's one I don't think I'd, I doubt it would have ever come to a British cinema, yeah. uh, certainly not a, a major one. And I, d I think I'd have missed it completely if it wasn't 
if it wasn't for, for, for the streaming services. And so going forward, what do you think the future of cinema is? As you've got, so yeah. Warner Brothers have basically said, we're going to be releasing all of our major films on streaming at the same time. It's an interesting one. I mean, I would always rather watch some films in cinemas, but it would be nice to think if everything, if all the big films are coming out on uh, online, it would be really nice to think that there was a gap in the market that little films could take advantage of. But my gut feeling is that's not what's going to happen. No. Uh, Which is a shame. I can't remember who it was, whether it was Spielberg or Lucas, who sort of predicted that the many years ago, that the future of cinema was it would just be an event film and it would play for like almost like a stage show like it would be an event it will play for months because you had to see it in the cinema Go if on. they are going to the, 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 there's the thing that, that obviously that if people are more people are watching online then the big the big studios aren't going to want to let any corner of the market go away from them so they'll be releasing more online so just maybe there is a chance yeah for the for the what i would hate to happen is for the big for the big films which have driven independent cinema out of the cinemas to then drive them out of the online market as well that it becomes e even more difficult to find yeah. them there so but hopefully there'll be a crack left for them somewhere what's changed big style is the quality of home entertainment and now you can buy a 65 inch screen for you know under a thousand pounds uh, you can have your surround sounds you've got big screen big sounds um, and nobody checking their mobile phone and eating mm. nachos next to you in some ways it's a better environment yeah but there is definitely something about watching a film with a bunch of people who are invested in that film yeah i wonder if it's a chance for more sort of like small independent cinemas mm -hmm. to start showing independent films because yeah. I think the same audience, I mean, maybe I'm generalising, but it seems to me that the same audience that likes the really big major releases are the ones who are pretty happy to watch at home, yeah. who don't really care about the cinema experience. Whereas people, uh, again, this is cinema snobbery at its worst, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But I would say that the people who like cinema, who like quiet cinemas without popcorn, without phones, who like that experience, are also the ones who would watch, maybe want to watch smaller films in a cinema. Mm. So maybe those two things can come together and there's room for little cinemas. Yeah, I think even with like the best intentions, if I'm watching like a smaller independent film that's a little bit slower and I'll just like reach for my phone and I'll be like, Wah. what the cinema does for me is it just goes, this is what you're doing for the next two hours, ignore everything else. And it gives you that discipline. Are people desperate to get back to the cinema? I don't... I think some people are. Yeah, are enough people, um, especially at the, the, the cost of it. That's another problem. I mean, I'd be very happy if cinemas started charging more for the big releases and less for independent films. And that seems like a perfectly logical thing to do. Because in London, you could be spending up to $20 in a West End cinema, maybe more. And you go, well, if I can get that same thing on video on demand and four of us can all sit down and watch it for that price, <laughs> um, I might be doing that. That is the other thing. It's harder, and it's harder to take a chance on a movie. Because of the amount it costs, you've got to, you've got to, this is a director I know, it's a star I know, it's a franchise I know, so I will go and see this and my money will not be wasted. Yeah. You're less likely to go and see a film on the off chance, which um, I think is a real shame. I, mean, I think that's one of the great joys is disco I, I think some of my best exp cinema experiences have been going to see films I know nothing about, but just sort of like saw a five star review of or something and you just and you can be blown away from. There you go. So that's cinema -y stuff. What else have we got coming up? Now that we are back able to fit, it has been, we were trying to get a special out every month and we were doing pretty well up until Christmas. And then, as Graham said, the, um, the lockdown has come in and Although some of our specials are voiceover only, it's just been difficult getting everything done and getting it done to the quality that, that we demand yeah. um, without being able to meet up. So we managed to get our, our Devil Rides Out special in, in March. Which promptly got copyrighted, so we make no money from it. If you want us to do more reviews like that, join us on Patreon, because that kind of helps with those sorts of things. Yeah. We want to put out the reviews we want to put out, and occasionally that happens, and there's not a lot we can do about it. It is a shame when it's a, a special that we put a lot of time into, and I've bought multiple books to do it, so there's time and money tied up in it. and. 
unfortunately, we don't know until the, the thing's uploaded whether or not it's going to have this problem. And um, yeah, chalk that up to experience. I, I'm still, I still stand by. I think it's a great, it's a really good special. Yeah. And, and people seem to appreciate it. But uh, we'll obviously be on the watch out for that in the future. Uh, what have we got coming up next? Next is our forever delayed Dracula versus Spanish Dracula. That was supposed to come out in January, but I needed to be on screen for it. Yeah. Um, it's not an ego thing. It's just because comparing the two films, it's slightly easier to have me there. Otherwise, it becomes confusing. We've shot it now, so hopefully that will be up uh, very shortly. Very shortly. It might even be up before this. I'm really looking forward to it going out because it's just a slightly different take to what we normally do. Yes. And it was, it was one that I had the idea for while we were doing our, while I was doing the research and uh, for for the Bela Lugosi and Universal Dracula special, and you suddenly realised that how different those two films were, and the the differences are for interesting reasons. And I think that's perhaps. There's a lot of people who talk about which one's best, and it's kind of nice to go in there and say, well, this is why they're different. It is really a unique comparison. I mean, obviously there are different versions of the same story made by different people, but they're always at different times. This yeah. is two men working from the same script, and it's amazing how different two films can be, working yeah. from same the same script, script. Same script, same sets. Same sets. Supposed to be the same blocking, they just yeah. decided n not to bother with that. We've also yeah. got our first ever product review that might also be out now. Uh, sure. This <laughs> is the, we may as well get an extra one in. Yes. Uh, this is the BenQ 850i, which we're not promoting now, but um, <laughs> uh, we were asked to do a product review, which is very exciting. And it is a review. We're not advertising the damn thing. Yeah. Um, we are giving it a proper review, which yeah. most of the onus of that, although it's me doing the presenting, most of it's on Graham because uh, he's got a wall on which to project it. And... Uh, <laughs> Let's be honest, any sort of technology like this, I would break. Uh, we've got our Christopher Lee's Top 10 Deaths special. Yes. Uh, which I haven't really started work on yet. Well, we've got the research. We've got the research, but I haven't really started work on it yet. Oh, and then we've also got a re-edit of the Vlad Vent calendar. Yes, um, but we're not calling it that. No. Uh, didn't really think about it, but it is this year is Dracula's cinematic centenary, the first, uh, or at least the first film anyone knows of. I wouldn't be surprised if there are older films um, with the name Dracula in it. Uh, was made in 1921. That film's Dracula's Death, um, a Hungarian film made the year before Nosferatu, which doesn't have the name Dracula in it, but which is a version of Dracula, which Dracula's Death isn't. But um, <laughs> if you can follow all of that, so we thought, just thought it was worth celebrating. The fact that this this incredibly ubiquitous character is yeah, I'm just quoting the review now. I was just quoting the video. I, you, so it was worth celebrating taking a bunch of videos we shot a couple of years ago and re-editing them into a new one. Well, that was definitely worth doing. That's how we celebrate it. Yep. By rehashing an old product. Well, if you're going to undersell it like that, then where's the point <laughs> in doing this video? Uh, it's a real shame that the uh, Dracula's death is lost to us. That we can't, yeah. we can't sort of see it. We can't see it at the moment. There is, there are rumours that it exists in a Hungarian archive, but who knows? Yeah. I sort of feel like if it was there, someone would have looked by now. I mean, I, I, that, yeah. that, that's a very, that's a stupid thing to say because if, well, no, if it was on the shelf under D, then I think they'd have found it. It's obviously in there somewhere. But if it's being kept in an archive, then presumably that's temperature controlled, and there's a decent chance that it'll still be watchable if yeah. and when they find it that there are films like Dracula's Death and London After Midnight which are lost to us, and yet they somehow managed to find The Astrologer and <laughs> re-release that. Well, the thing was, I mean, The Astrologer's called The Lost Film. From what I understand, it was never actually lost. It was just that it didn't get released because right. of... Because, I mean, if you know... When I was watching The Astrologer, I, I suspect our review has already gone out. Uh, yes, yes. Um, it has. Then when the music started, I just thought, well, this is a dreadful film, but this is actually, I like this music. <laughs> and that's because it, it's the Moody Blues. All the, the music in it is made by some, is done by some pretty big bands and they just used it without permission. So I wonder what, so when now it's released, it just got released on YouTube. Is this just a case that somebody's got it and they just released it on YouTube and went, I must be. I, I actually think it might be. So how long it will be on YouTube, I do not know. So... Yeah, good and it's, really, it it's, a, it's a good quality scan that they've done of it. Mm. Um, I know, because it was shown at a film festival somewhere. Right. So I don't know if it's connected to that. Okay. Maybe, I don't know. I don't oh. know. Maybe the Moody Blues don't care anymore. 
Yeah, that's a similar one to Seance. That was another one that never really got released and got silently leaked on YouTube. Oh, that was dreadful. That's a, that's a review. Not that the astrology was any good. That's a review I wish got more attention because I yeah. think that was a that's a really good bad a, film. It's a good bad film, maybe. So as, alongside of the specials and um, various other things. Oh, yeah. 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 Alongside of the specials, we've I've also been doing a new series that is exclusive to our Patreon supporters. Uh, which, as I say, I wanted to do something because, for those who don't know, our Patreon supporters come in three levels, and I wanted to do something that was for, for all of them that would go out on a weekly basis. And Alfred Hitchcock made around 52 films, you, depending on which ones you count. So one for every week of the year. So I've been doing this series, 52 Weeks of Hitchcock, in which I look at one Hitchcock film a week, do a video uh, for, for, for our Patreon supporters, just talking about it, uh, about the, the history of it and what I thought of the film itself. And it's great for me. I've, I'd seen, I think, 47, 48 Hitchcock films before this started. So, but a lot of them I'd only seen once, and obviously those few I hadn't seen at all. So it's great for me to be watching them. And... Um, yeah, it's turned in, yeah. it's it's turned into I think a little a nice little series which people seem to be appreciating. Yeah, it's a yeah it's a completely different format. It's literally just yeah. new, it's literally Robin just talking about his passion, which uh, is yeah always engaging for people. Uh, no idea why, but it does and, seem. To be. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you can join us on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, if you're proper cheapskate, <laughs> join in December for a dollar and then just binge watch all 52 episodes of Hitchcock and then leave. Mm. <laughs> that would take you 26 hours because they're about half hour each. Yeah, so there you go. So, so it's time well spent. It's quite I, possible I, I you could say, do it. Everybody would say. Um, but, um, but yeah, so... And, and of course, that's not all you get from Patreon. No, no we, is, do, we do like uh, extra direct... We talk about the films we review in greater detail. We stick all the reviews up uh, without ads. And if there's boobies in, we don't censor them. <laughs> yeah, that's really hitting the selling points. And it, I mean, in all seriousness, it, it, it also helps. Uh, you know, the, the, the channel is not free to run and um, we don't always get a huge amount out of, out of the adverts that are there. And Patreons, it really means a lot to us that, that, that people yeah. enjoy the show that, that, that much that they are willing to, to give us this support. And it makes a huge difference. We couldn't do... The, the big specials without that yeah. it really is it's important to us yeah it takes yeah we put more and more time into it and uh, it means less and less time for other things yeah but so uh, we enjoy doing it so it's we kind do. of working out all right <laughs> it's going okay going okay I think that's a, that, that's like a summation of the 2021 <laughs> dark corner season it's going okay it's had some bad points it's had some yeah. good points obviously we had our most successful video ever last year yeah um, we've also had some pretty some pretty poor performing videos as well. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Uh, we never know. We never know what's going to do well, what's going to do. No, poorly. I do sort of love the fact that like um, sort of like I think August September last year we put out something on the Phantom Menace, which whichever way you look at it, one of the most successful films of all time. Yes, and something on the Man Who Laughs, a now not obscure but certainly not widely known silent mm. film. And uh, one of them is, has just passed 10,000. Uh, the other one has just passed 465,000. Yeah. Guess which is which. <laughs> I love that. That's, that to me is, yeah. that's, that's a fan base that I want to be part of. Yes. Uh, My own fan base. We've got plans for another silent review later this year. We do. And there may be a silent film being reviewed on streaming uh, shortly. Ooh. Or possibly already gone out, depending on when this goes out. Interesting. Right, well, um, thanks for watching. Uh, we haven't done one of these for a while. I think it showed. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think this was as amateurish as it's ever been. Uh, we will try and get back to doing these on a more regular basis. And we'll try to base them more around sort of like, uh, sort, of, uh, sort of more about cinema chat rather than just yeah. talking about yeah, what no, we're doing Yeah, give us some topics. Give it, yeah, that would to be great. If you about. could give us some topics to talk about. Um, current cinema, classic cinema. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Large topics, and it should, talk should also be noted we did, we have spent today filming the next three months worth of episodes. So when we say this next, we'll do another one of these soon. Won't be that. It soon. might be in three months. <laughs> to be honest, I'd be pleased if we could get these out quarterly. 
I'd, I'd take oh, that. Yeah, that, yeah, that. That sounds like a goal. Well, that's, that's a target we could reach. I think, I think when, we have, when we have targets, we tend to reach them. Yeah. So, yeah, quarterly. Quarterly. The Dark Corners Quarterly. That's yes. what we're calling this. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, take care, everyone. Thanks, Thanks again for sport and all the rest of that jazz. See you next time.